This is a Canon M50. And this is a blurry background from the Canon M50's kit lens. I'm gonna share with you the three best tips that I've found to get this kind of result with the Canon M50. Arguably the most important tip, it costs you nothing. Positioning of the subject, the camera, and the scene. Let me explain. All right, so I've just taken like 12 steps back and I'm right on top of my background here in my studio. Even though this is a really high quality lens at a 2.8 f-stop, my background is in way more focus than I would like it to be because I'm simply right on top of it. There's no separation in the real world. So if you can't provide separation in the real world, you're fighting a losing battle, even with a high quality lens. With a kit lens like the M50 that only goes to 3.5 f-stop, you're going to struggle to get a blurry background like this unless you can provide a significant distance between your subject and the background. The aperture mainly controls two things, the amount of light that hits the sensor and the depth of field. The depth of field is the area within the frame that's in focus, usually your subject, and everything else that's not inside the depth of field, your foreground, your background, is usually reduced to a blur. And this is exactly what we wanna to do to achieve a cinematic effect. Strangely, the lower the aperture number, which is the f-stop on your camera, the more amount of light that's getting into your sensor, and the shorter the depth of field. The higher the f-stop, or the higher the aperture, the smaller the window is. And in fact, the larger the depth of field becomes. When you're shooting outdoors and you still wanna isolate your subject and have a nice blurry background, having a low aperture is likely going to overexpose your image. So what you need then is ND filters. The ND filter is like sunglasses for your camera. Ones like this are actually variable, so you can adjust your exposure externally without adjusting your camera settings, keeping a consistent look through all your shots, even if the lighting conditions are changing, ND filters is a great way to do that is we want to keep our shutter speed double that of our frame rate to realistically emulate the look of motion blur in our film. Like frames are chopping just like this. Unless you're going for that look, it's just not what you're after. And if we do crank things up a bit, things just look a little too flashy and perfect. We drop this back to 1 in 50 where it's supposed to be and all of a sudden, things just kinda look normal. And the third and final tip to improve the blurry background and the cinematic look of your footage is focal length. Generally, the longer the focal length of your lens, the easier it's going to be to isolate your subject in sharp focus and blur out your background. Same lens, 70 mil, same aperture, but a completely different look. The subject is in sharp focus, the background is way, way blurred out and insignificant, whereas we go out to 24, hey, same aperture, same lens, but it's obviously a lot more busy in the frame, the subject is still there, but not as dominant. All these factors come into play in creating the look that you're after. 